tonight on Ghost Hunters International. The team travels to Ireland to investigate a notorious castle. What's that? There's somebody down there? Holy Will the souls of the damned unleash their wrath on the investigators? Who's back there? Did you hear that little boy? Yeah. Damn. Then, the team experiences the bloody past of the most haunted place in Great Britain. One soldier removed his sword, and with one swing of the sword, removed his head. What's that up in the corner? That looks like a head. And Rob places an emergency call to Jason and Grant. We got a bit of a problem over here. guys it's rob hey rob what's going on man uh what's going on is we got a bit of a problem over here donna has to get back home so obviously we're a person short you want us to send somebody over there could you i know it's wicked short notice yeah well we could probably send chris williams out to you for a short period of time but you're not allowed to keep her though all right thanks a lot guys appreciate it all right good luck over there man all right you too stay safe <laughs> at least Chris will enjoy herself and I will. Yeah, she'll have a blast. Well, I think we uh, might want to go like Chris will. <laughs> Pack your bag, William. So, Chris, have you ever been out of the United States before? I have not. This is your first time out of the U.S.? It is, yeah. So what do you think so far? Are you excited? Very excited. Part of the reason why I got into this was I am a huge genealogy person, mm. and a good part of my family was actually from Ireland, so this is pretty cool. I was so excited to find out that I'd be coming to help out GHI, and I'm just curious to see how GHI will do things differently than we do things back home with TAPS. Well, Chris, we're definitely excited to have you along. Thank you so much for coming out on real short notice. We Not do a appreciate it. No, we're all looking forward to working with you. So, Mary, how is it to be back in Ireland? You know, Rob, it is nice to see the green, green grass of home. And what about that wet, wet rain you brought with us? Ah, it all goes hand in hand with the place. It's wonderful. Good stuff. I've previously investigated Charleville Castle. It has been several years since I've been back at Charleville. I was down there several times. Okay, guys, Charleville Castle, Tullamore, Ireland. The castle is actually built in 1798. There's been sightings of Charles Burry, the builder of the castle. His daughter Harriet, who died at a young age. People have reported seeing her on the staircase, as well as other areas around the castle. This is it. Wow, dude. Oh, this oh, should be oh, interesting. So what do you think, Chris? You ever seen anything like this before? I have never seen anything like this before. This is crazy. This is going to be quite an investigation. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, how are you? Good, Rob. I certainly hope GHI will find something. Having evidence would show that it's not just flights of fancy of your imagination. We understand you have quite a bit of paranormal activity as well. Oh, we do. We don't have a set ghost. They just happen to appear randomly in different parts of the castle. If you could show us around yeah. and tell us about sure. it, that would be great. This is the staircase where Harriet fell. She was up there. That was the nursery, the top floor. She was sent up to have her hands washed. And on coming down, she decided it'd be great fun to slide. She fell to her death there. The first time we found out about Harriet, my son was about four. He went missing. We were terrified. We looked for him, I don't know, for an hour or so. And we found him at the bottom of this staircase. And he said, little girl held my hand. One night, I was sleeping in the towel room. I heard what sounded like a table being dragged across the floor above me. I climbed the stairs, went to the room above us to see exactly what it was. There was actually no table in there. There was nothing that was moved. Well, 
welcome to the dungeon. So I take it was designed for comfort. <laughs> well, when, when you ended up in there, chances are you didn't come out. So was this a functional dungeon? Yes, it was for a brief time. In 1802, there was an uprising, and they threw some of uh, your usual suspects in here. There was a couple of us sitting down there, and I started to feel very, very sick and I couldn't breathe very well, and I started dry retching. And I didn't tell anyone I was feeling this because I didn't want to freak everyone else out. But someone from across the room told me that my skin on my face was changing. It was tightening up. It's just a horrible, horrible feeling. We've certainly got our work cut out for us. You, you've given us quite a challenge, but I think we're up for it. So if you can show us some way out of here, I think we'll start getting set up and get right to it. OK. This way? Thanks. It's been a heck of a 19 years that I've been here. Um, I mean, the family's raised here. I don't know how many friends from every assorted background and every assorted time and place in the world. It's definitely haunted. When we drove up, I thought to myself, we've done some neat looking castles before, but this one looks incredible. And then to go on the tour and see that this has some really interesting activity, I'm really excited to get in here and, and work with the guys and our new member for the week, Chris Williams, and see what we can do here. Mr. Fitzgerald, how's that last camera look? That's bad. <laughs> being in Ireland with Barry, having a local on our team, being here with us, gives a whole new perspective to everything. It really lends to the case. Wrong. Now that you guys are all here in Ireland, I wanted to prepare a traditional Irish dish. A real good, hefty, hearty Irish stew that'll help us get through the night. That'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah, if you don't mind doing it, that'd be terrific. That's OK. No all worries. Right. In between times, I'll give you a hand to set up. All right, that'd okay. be well appreciated. No Thanks problem. again, Barry. We're here in the kitchen of Charleville Castle, and I'm preparing an Irish stew for the guys. It's a traditional dish from Ireland, and we'll set them up well for tonight's investigation. What's going on, guys? What's up, guys? So the cameras look good, huh? Yeah, pretty good here. We got the camera one, the whole main hallway where the uh, apparition scene here and here. And then the coup de grace is the stairwell looking up. That's the top where she fell off. And this is basically where she landed. And everything else is good to go. It's rock and roll, man. Well, guys, now that we've got everything set up, we can eat. Let's do it. I'm, re I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> It smells good, buddy. Just grab a seat anywhere. Thank you. I enjoy cooking, I enjoy ghost hunting, and, and I find there's a good combination there. Very good, Barry. Very good. You know, Barry, I always have trouble eating uh, when we travel, but uh, if you're going to keep cooking for us, I think I'll be all right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, Barry, that was awesome. Thank you very much. Let's go get the lights out and get going. Let's do it. All right. My personal insight into the castle would draw me to the tunnels that lead out toward the chapel. One of the reports from the locals in the town says that the particular entity is wearing the British uniform, stood back against the wall with his arms tied against the wall. That was not residual. That entity was waiting on those people. I want to see what's down there. The difference between a residual and an intelligent haunting is huge. An intelligent haunting can interact with you, whereas a residual haunting has no idea you're there. What kind of things happen down in these rooms back when they were in use? These were the, some of the cells that people were held in, and people who went against the crown. Session. Okay. EVP stands for electronic voice phenomenon. It's a noise or sound that we did not hear with our own ears at the time of the recording. We're in your space now. We have relatively little defense. If you're going to do anything, now would be the time. You can't see anything. It just makes you feel like a sitting duck. Why are you down here? Are you afraid to come forward? Or are you waiting your time? Something moving in the back there. What's going on? You can't see anything down that way. There was one point that we heard footsteps and where the entrance was. That's very back down. So we moved throughout the dungeon area, looking for the source of the footsteps, but couldn't find it. We stayed there for some time, but they didn't reoccur. Brian, I want to 
head check on the top of the stairwell where Harriet fell to her death. And um, we're both uh, parents. We both have little girls in particular. So I think that really kind of hit home with us. Could you try to show yourself to us? Dude, this camera's acting weird. You know, come look, the screen's a... Now it's straightening out. The screen's like going all crazy fuzzy. Really? Like vertical lines and stuff, and then coming back to normal. Wavy lines going straight down. Really? And it stopped. Somebody here with us? Something's making noise out there. Somebody here with us? While Brian and I were investigating the third floor, we started hearing some weird noises. Slow up. Shh, shh. Quiet. Huh. There's a weird sound coming out of here. I heard it like three or four times. It's like... It sounded like it was coming right from this room. Every time we seemed to get close to the sound, it would disappear on us. It was like it was hiding from us, like playing a game. If that was you making that sound, could you do that again? Hear it? What the hell is that? I don't know. It's almost like a giggling sound. I heard a few noises, a couple of things. We don't know exactly what it was, but uh, hopefully we caught it on, on audio and maybe uh, we can play it back and actually figure out if it was giggling for something else. This is Barry and Andy and the servants' access tunnel from the chapel to the kitchen. What is your name? Give us a sign. Why are you still here? What right do you still have to be here? Are you English? Are you Irish? Are you a child? Andy and I were conducting an EVP session in the servants' corridors. Suddenly, just out of the corner of my eye, I seen a flash of light that appeared toward the kitchen area. Who are you? Shortly after that, there was the sound of thumps and bangs that had started originating in the kitchen area. Something thumping and banging down here. Let's move into the kitchen. So the both of us went to investigate. Is there someone here who would like to play with us? Any kind of game. Who's back there? Did you hear? That, vo that little voice? Yeah. For me, it was clear as day. I heard a voice. It almost sounded like, I'm hungry. It was very light, but I heard a child's voice, no doubt, in my mind. Is that you? That was odd. Did you knock that over? Nope, nowhere near it. Come forward and give us a sign. A sign that you're here. I just got something else head over here. I heard that again, yeah. We started getting movement around us. Actual pieces of our equipment were touched or moved, uh, creating sound. So you like to play? Let's say we have a game of... You try and sneak up and touch either me or Andy. 
That's a fair enough game. We can't see you, but we won't hear you. What happened? Something hit you? Yeah. <laughs> Something was through across the floor, um, and I just landed on my feet and made me jump. I discovered it was a piece of wire. Can you give me another sign that you are here? Uh, at this point, I'm really excited to uh, figure out if we might have captured anything on our equipment. decided to investigate the staircase where a little girl named Harriet had fallen to her death. I figured we start around where she fell off, around the second floor. Harriet. I understand you had a very bad fall when you were in this stairwell. Something gets duck under that staircase. Dude, keep a light right there. I got you, baby. I got you, baby. As we were walking downstairs, I saw what I thought was a figure duck off underneath the staircase. Nobody. There's nobody there. I know with, with certainty that I saw something move from the bottom of the stairs and almost like duck away under the staircase. What was that? Did it sound like it was above you? Do you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. Talk to me, bro. I don't do this. It's not a movement up here, man. I just saw something by the top of the stairs. Harriet? Holy <laughs> Brian and I were asking a lot of questions on the staircase. Uh, at one point, we both heard what sounded like a voice. Some kind of noise coming from above us where we know there's no one up there. I just saw something by the top of the stairs. Harriet? As we were walking up there, Brian said, I just saw a white light up there. So I'm following along behind him, trying to get up there quickly. Holy At the top of the stairs, I saw a white light as well. It's like right here, right? And then I heard some kind of weird noise, like a weird voice. I heard something up here as well. And I was like, all I saw was just something like, go this way. Harriet? You in here? Look, I know I saw something up here, so there's no reason to run away at this point. You might as well come on out. Hello? Harriet? When we got up there, we walked the whole thing. We couldn't find anything. Where'd you go? This was a tricky case. It seemed like everything that was going on was always one room away, one floor down. It was always just out of reach. So, of course, now the big hope is that we did manage to catch something. Hey, Bonnie. Hi. You know, it was a thorough investigation. We had a lot to cover. I'm pretty excited to get back, get some rest, and go through the footage. And we'll see you in a couple days and uh, show you if we found anything or not. OK, that'd be great. I'm looking forward to GHI showing us some evidence. I certainly hope after this night that they found a sign of Harriet. I'm really looking forward to seeing what GHI has found.
Uh, well, that was an interesting case. And Chris, definitely the fact that you showed up on real short notice, mm -hmm. you know, we appreciate that. I've always wanted to come to Ireland, so I mean, I was excited about that, and it was, it was amazing. So you liked your first castle, right? I did. It was yeah. very cool. Very cool. It certainly it, it was a very challenging site, I thought. Yeah. You know, the fact is, it was always on the move, and we were trying to catch it all the time. Probably like playing a big game of hide-and-seek. Yeah. yeah, we, would, yeah. we didn't win either. <laughs> no. All right, well, Chris, if you could do the wireless audio and some of the mini-DV tapes. Okay. Barry, you know, the EVP master, and um, pictures and thermal. I'm going to do DVR, and I'm going to listen to a couple of the handhelds. No worries. something I want you to listen to. This is uh, when Chris and I were in the dungeon. Okay. What is that? Harriet? It's, it's possible. We suspected that she was causing that cat and mouse situation that we were seeing all night. Wow, well, what the shots of Rob and Andy. Let's see what they think. Okay. Back to it. Wait a minute. What the hell was that? What's going on? What's up, guys? So how'd we do? Barry's got a couple pieces he wanted to show, a couple EVPs and stuff. Hey, guys. This was taken with myself and Chris in the dungeon. Chris had just finished an EVP session, and I came in and asked a question to which there was a reply. Have a listen. OK. So you can't Well, I can definitely hear that. Let me see. But you can't have some level of communication. Yeah, there's no mistaking that there's something there. Yeah, I mean, to me, it sounded like, I don't know about you guys, but a muffled child's voice. Yeah, that's, that's what we were saying as well. But, Barry, it sounds very similar to what we thought we heard down in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pitch-wise. Yep. So we got yep. a good EVP. What else do we have? Now we have some photographs I want you to have a look at. This was taken down in the basement corridors. The door remains open. Everything's fine. Suddenly it's closed. Look at that. That's yeah. definitely interesting evidence. So, Bonnie, you told us right away that there was this kind of activity that was always a little further away. It was going down to the basement to chase the sound down there, going to the top of the stairs, bottom of the stairs. Yes. There's always a distance between what happened and trying to chase it down. Yes. We got to experience that firsthand. We'd hear a noise two rooms away. By the time we got to that room, either there was nothing there, no sound, or now it was the next room. So it made it quite tricky to try and gather evidence when we're doing this kind of cat and mouse game. As well as some playful type activity too. Uh, pieces of sound equipment being moved and knocked over. At one point, an investigator said he had something thrown at him. Myself and Brian, we both saw a white light on the third floor. We both heard voices up there. We went, nothing. We we're going down the stairs. When both of us saw at the bottom of the stairs something duck under the staircase. We ran down the stairs, but once again, it was this kind of ongoing thing where it was always a step away. Sure, they're, they're very mischievous. Absolutely. We did capture some evidence as well. Oh, that's great. The first piece of evidence that we want you to check out and get your opinion of is what we call an EVP, or electronic voice phenomenon. This is actually an EVP that we recorded in the dungeon, and this was uh, Barry and Chris. But you can't have some level of communication. I heard something after that. Let's play it one more time. But you can't have some level of communication. It's almost like a, a, 
little child, maybe playing peekaboo. Is that a familiar voice? Yeah, frequently. I've heard children running around upstairs in the nursery. I have two grandchildren, and I'll think one of them is around, only to realize they've gone home hours ago. What do you think when you hear it now that it's recorded? I'm happy you have it recorded. <laughs> I was beginning to doubt my sanity for a while. You know? Right. Oh, I can imagine. We were starting to say, what's going on around yeah. here? Because everything was, I heard it two rooms that way. I heard it from over there, and then by the time we got there, nothing. So we were pretty happy that we were able to pick this up. Now, that's not the only piece of evidence we captured, though. This is what we found very interesting. So, Bonnie, that's not the only piece of evidence we captured, though. This was actually taken by one of our investigators, Barry. He's using a full-spectrum camera. Let's see, do you recognize that area right there? Yeah, it's a uh, lower level. It would have been the servant's area mm -hmm. leading up to the butler's pantry. Okay, and then we have the far doorway mm -hmm. that is leading out of there and then the light mm -hmm. in the hallway. Yeah. So what happened was Barry was taking photos with three-second pause between each photo. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we can see the hallway. We have the mm -hmm. light right there. Now watch what happens. The light goes out. Any idea why that light's going out? It just has to be blocked. Exactly. And it's blocked by the door. So within these few frames, we see that the door on its own closes. And there's no wind down there. There's no wind down there, and that's within three seconds between the two different shots. This is right in front of two investigators. Mm -hmm. We're kind of left mystified. It's not the wind. What shut the door? I'd say the spirits put a lot of effort into showing you that they were there. So, Bonnie, the team did experience paranormal activity, but I don't think that two pieces of evidence are enough for us to conclusively say, yes, this castle is haunted. So, as much as we wanted to come in and help solve the mystery, I think we may have wound up adding, adding to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely made for an exciting evening and a great investigation. We want to thank you for having us here. Well, you, you've definitely added to the stories now. <laughs> <laughs> but with some solid proof. Yeah. Well, Bonnie, thank you very much. Thank you. To be able to capture a voice of a child down in the kitchen is pretty amazing because for the longest time I've been hearing voices of children. I'm still certain Charville Castle is very haunted. We came in and, and showed her some interesting evidence that she seemed to really say, well, yeah, I've, I've had that kind of experience before. Mm, anytime that you can have the client collaborate with you as far as, yes, this is what you experienced, that's the same that I experienced. You know, that's pretty cool. That's, that's always great to have the validation there. All right, well, I can't wait to see where we're off to next. This is Brandy, our new case manager. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. I've been invited to join the team as case manager, and I'm really looking forward to that because I have experience with working on my own team as case manager, so I think it's a great fit for me. Well, enough talk. Let's get to it. Okay. Okay. Samsbury Hall, mile and a half. Brandy is going to fill us in on tonight's investigation. There have been lots of paranormal accounts at Samsbury Hall. Full-bodied apparitions to strange lights, sound, objects being moved, and people actually have reported being touched as well. All right, guys, so take a look at this. Oh, look at that. Kind of looks like a gothic gingerbread house. Yes. Simon. Rob. Hello, Rob. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Simon, I'm Andy. Hi, Andy. And I'm Barry. Nice to see you, Barry. Thanks. So can you tell us a little bit about the history of this location? We're in a building that was built way back in 1325. For a while, it became a public house. It then became a handloom weaver's factory. And for a short while, it became a school for young ladies, full of history. We understand there's been some paranormal activity as well, huh? Believe you me, this is the most haunted house in Great Britain. Well, if you wouldn't mind, if we could take a tour. I'd be honored. And this beautiful room here is known simply as the Tudor Room. This is one of the most haunted rooms in Salisbury Hall. 
Now, we know that uh, Sir Thomas Southworth loved this room with all his heart, and he told his wife that when he died, he would like to be placed on a trestle. What exactly is a trestle? A trestle is basically two chairs. The coffin was placed in the two chairs to support the weight of the coffin. Way back in 1972, a family from New York arrived. Typical family, mum, dad, two daughters. He took a picture of the fireplace. He then went back to New York and skipped through the photographs. Right. When he looked at the fireplace, he saw in front of it a trestle with a coffin on. So where are we off to next? The priest room. In the jetty, it's commonly called the, the priest room, there was a terrible murder in there. And I walk into that room, I feel I want to heave. If I feel like someone is pushing me out of the room as I go in, every time I go in. In the year 1559, a priest called Edmund Campion arrived here. He had no idea he'd been followed by British mm. Army troops. Mm -hmm. The door was forced open, three soldiers arrived, and one soldier removed his sword, and with one swing of the sword, removed his head. The floor and the walls were spattered with blood. Any attempt to clean the floor didn't work. They could scrub the floor, but the blood always remained. As a result, this room was bricked up for a good 200 years until 1898 and these brand new floorboards inserted but if you look you'll see that the floor is still stained so here we are on the lawns of Salisbury Hall and this is where the white lady has always been seen the white lady is called Lady Dorothea Southworth she was banished by her father because she had a Protestant lover why does she always stand here in the 1880s? The builders found a skeleton, and on the skeleton's finger was an engagement ring, the ring he was going to give to Lady Dorothea that night. Two years ago, a police car had a collision with her in the centre of the road to our left, and the forensic teams looked at the front of the vehicle and found the grill was concave. In terms of British ghost stories, Lady Dorothea is one of the most famous ghosts in Great Britain. Welcome to Lady Jane's bridge. Lady Jane Braddle was arrested way back in the year 1612. She was accused of being a witch and they say her ghost does in fact glide down the bridge. So people have seen her go past these windows. It has happened on quite a few occasions. Simon, you have provided quite a few wonderful stories about this beautiful and historic location and you know at this point before it gets any darker we want to get our equipment out, of get course. set up and see what we can do. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you Simon. This building was originally built in 1325, so this makes it one of the oldest locations we've ever investigated. So that's a lot of history and a lot of possibility of paranormal activity. So the question now is, can we document that activity? Or are we going to find ways to come up with alternative explanations for all this stuff? Dustin Perry for Andy Green. Well, we got quite the case on this one. We got full-bodied apparitions. We've got sounds. We've got noises, stories of murders, suicides. Obviously. We gotta get set up before it gets much darker because we got a big night ahead of us. Uh, well, we got the gear out and uh, got Brandy a team jacket, officially part of the team. Absolutely. All right, let's get this stuff inside. The camera there, okay. we'll need to run the cable too. And there's another one on a tripod. Got some fantastic ideas to bring forward to the team. There's a few new things that I want to introduce, especially downstairs. And those you'll see behind the batteries in the top. And I'm looking forward to a good investigation tonight. How was your first setup? Okay. Nice. So, the camera angles look good. What do we got? We have the fireplace and doorway into the chapel. Then into the Tudor room, we obviously want to cover the fireplace. And heading upstairs into the main long gallery past the priest room. Barry, I think you did a great job. I think we're off to a great start. Thanks. All right, let's get the lights out and get going. This is where women mysteriously get their hair tugged or touched by an invisible force. You know, that's not the kind of thing you can really necessarily debunk. Right. And you know right. if you got your hair pulled, so I'll ask if Brandy's willing to investigate up here. See if anything happens. Definitely got cold air coming in through the done. windows. Go back. What was that? Go that. What do we got? CCTV cam. Got it. Well, I'll tell you what. I think if if 
we're gonna do some white lady hunting, we should go outside. Between the two trees? Yes, sir. All righty. All right, now let's go. Dude, hold on a second. Do you see that to the right of the tree? What's that little blue? Yeah, I see that. Let's just keep an eye on it as right. we walk towards it. It's right on the top of the stairs there. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So it was just uh, the way that the had, camera angle was. Oh, we had something playing a little peekaboo with us. There doesn't appear to be anything anomalous out here, but I would like to take a look where the, the story of the witch looking out the windows is. Who walks on the other by side. the windows? We should yeah. do a sweep of those windows and Absolutely. see if we pick up a heat sink. Yeah, let's do it. After we investigated the tree, Rob and I decided to head on over to the bridge where the supposed witch has been seen in the windows. All right, so we want to aim right for those windows Looking to see right at if the windows. we see... What's that up in the corner? Right up here in that pane, is that? That looks like a head, dude. Look at that. Can you shine your flashlight from here? You see that shadow? Yeah. Whatever is casting that shadow. It's a piece of pottery, I think. Yeah. Right. What the hell was that? Rob and I were doing the thermal sweep outside. What the hell was that? All of a sudden, we heard this bang. It was definitely over here. Suddenly, the same sound was heard, but this time in the opposite direction, the direction that we had just come from. Do we have a door anywhere that someone's using, or? Hello? There's nobody here. I'm not picking anything up on this thermal. So it was nice having a the thermal out there, because if someone had been walking around, within seconds we could have pinpointed it. Nothing turned up. EVP session, Barry, Andy, and Dustin in the Tudor room. If your spirit remains in these walls, I would appreciate it if you would come forward to us. It was a sign that you're here. Move something, anything to let us know that you're here. Does this fireplace have special meaning to you? Was this your final resting place? I think we'll wrap it at that. Okay. All right, so Brandy, this is a long gallery and uh, just a variety of activity as far as women getting hair pulled. Okay, I'm looking forward to getting my hair pulled. I think it's important to have a female on the team. It's a good investigative dynamic, and when we've got stuff in a certain location that involves a female, it's totally necessary. EVP session with Rob and Brandy in the long gallery. Are you the one that enjoys tugging or pulling on females' hair? If so, I invite you to pull on my hair. You do seem to enjoy guests being here with you. Are you not interacting with Brandy because she doesn't have blonde hair? You good, Brandy? I'm good. All right. EVP session end. Andy and myself head up to the priest room. We had a look at the floor. If there was blood on the floor. There would be a sputter. Yeah. Which there's not. Right. These boards are closer together. Mm-hmm. These ones, you're getting the swelling. There's some sort of liquid. Yep. Certainly not blood. It turned out the floorboard wasn't nailed, so it was easy to lift. When was this floor supposed to have been replaced? Yeah, 1840. That's a newer floor than that. Much newer. We found particle board under the floorboards, which indicates the floor was replaced 
after World War II. Again, we run into this whole urban legend thing. Mm -hmm. Priest was murdered in here, was yeah. decapitated, blood everywhere, and uh, now any kind of liquid type stain on the floor, people are going to say it is the blood of the priest. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. All right, guys, I think the fact that the sun is now coming up means it's time to definitely get the lights on and pack it up. So, uh, let's pack it up. We didn't have a ton of experiences tonight, but somewhere in all that footage, maybe some top-notch evidence. I really enjoyed my first investigation with the team and look forward to reviewing the evidence to see what we captured. Today I'm doing research on Salisbury Hall, which is supposedly the most haunted place in all of Great Britain. There's a lot of legends and myths surrounding the place, and I'm here at the local library to get the facts. What the? Oh man, wait till the guys hear this. Hey, Simon. Andy, really, really good to see you. When we took this tour, I said to myself, oh, this is, this is going to be a good evening. There's a lot of stuff for us yeah, to look into yeah. here. And what we did, as you know, is we came in before the sun went down, and we stayed till the sun came up, and there was just no time left. Yeah. You told us some terrific stories. Yes. And what we need to do is go back and find the basis or the origins and do a little time travel to find out where these stories came from. Of course. We have an investigator named Dustin who does all of that research for us. Yes. You had told us uh, two stories in particular. Of course, the story of the white lady. Yes. And you had taken us out into the front where you had told us the story of the police car. Yes. Police officer was driving out in front. The white lady appeared. He seemed to have hit it with his car. He stopped. He got out in front. And actually, there was visible damage on the car. Well, Dustin did call the local police they were unable to find any references to the fact that there was an accident in any way out in front with a police car. Well, I do know that they've got to keep their records very, very, um, well, I suppose the word is uh, very private, really. Mm. The other aspect that we were looking into was the story that bones were found buried under the trees when drainage was being put in for the road. That's out correct, front. yes. In his research, Dustin found that there was no reference to any human bones found there whatsoever. The interesting thing he did find was that in one book, they had discovered wild boar bones. With that, we couldn't help but to wonder, did this kind of kick off some kind of urban legend? With regards to the bodies being buried, mm. the story has been handed down from generation to generation. Mm. Mm. We're told her lover was murdered mm -hmm. and buried. Mm. Of course, I wasn't around in 1426. Right. <laughs> I think you're kind of like me. You love a great story. I do. I love stories. With these terrific stories, we want to see if we can get a, get a piece of that, get some evidence from these stories. Yeah. We went through every single photograph, every recording, every audio recording, every video recording, and we came up with nothing. I'm really, really shocked by that, actually. You know, and that doesn't mean that there isn't something here. Yeah. Just means that there was nothing on this evening for us yeah. to capture. So I'm, I'm a little bit d deflated, uh, gentlemen, to be honest with you, but, uh, but there again, I know you've done a very, very good job. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Rob, Tom. it's a pleasure. Thank you Andy, so much. a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. I was very interested in the fact that they said they didn't find skeletons in the ground. I was convinced that this really did happen. This house has experienced terrible histories of uh, sadness and cruelty. You sort of feel that there's something left here, really. So how do you think it went? I think it went really well. Sometimes evidence isn't going to be there. I'm really looking forward to working with Brandy in the future, and I, I think that she has a lot to offer the team. Yeah, absolutely. You know, she may still be a little nervous, but she, she's really working hard, and she fits in well. Speaking of Brandy, I think it's time to see where we're off to next. Sounds good.